So let me just clarify something. He's commonly referenced as my mentor. And, but in the traditional understanding of that word, that's not true. The traditional understanding of a mentor is someone you consult with frequently and they guide you through important key moments or decision points in your career and in your life. So that was not the case. In fact, I was probably in his presence four times in my life. I can probably count them. See, one, two, three, yeah, four times in my life. So it's not about mentor in the traditional sense. Let me say that you can mentor someone without even ever having met them. You can mentor them by example, provided the mentee is open and, and, and receptive of seeking out where there's an example that they might want to emulate. So for me, one of my greatest influential moments was in this particular case, I, we were together my first time meeting him and he had written a letter to me to invite me up to Cornell. I was in high school to tour Cornell to see if I, so I can decide whether I wanted to attend. I did not know that the admissions office had sent my application to him for his comment because my application was dripping with the universe. Cause again, I was into it since I was nine. It was eight years running at age 17, uh, going to, uh, it, ready for the universe. Did I do my math right there? 17, eight, 25. <laughs> Anyhow, so nearly half my life. So he writes me a personal letter, invites me to Cornell. Uh, and, and he was already, he hadn't done Cosmos yet, but he was already famous. He had best-selling book on the Tonight Show, um, then a highly criticized step for a scientist, by the way. You're going to be on a comedic talk show and not on a documentary? What kind of scientist are you? All right. So he was, he was very uh, uh, forward thinking in this regard, because after he made these public appearances, members of Congress would say in response to their electorate, oh, you want to explore space? Isn't that what Carl Sagan said on TV the other day? Yeah, so let's do that. All tide waters rose for all, for all boats after he... Uh, after his visibility became widespread. But anyhow, why is he spending this much time with me? We just met. I, I don't know him. I'm 17. He's a full-grown famous person. And I swore after that encounter that any future occasion to serve as a, as a, you know, to advise or to, to offer comment, helpful comments to a student that no matter how famous I became, I would give time to the student the way Carl Sagan gave time to me. And I, to this day, I do that as best as I can. I mean, I, there's a limit to the hours in a day um, until I can master relativity. <laughs> there's a limit, but I joke about it. I'll say, you know, I see a student at the door and I say, Barack, I got to call you back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got a student that you know, I, I joke about that. Maybe I'd still talk to the president, but, but that's the sense of this. So for me, that was the most everlasting. And another one was his near infinite patience. Speaking to people who may have twisted, tangled mental pathways of thought. And he would find ways to disentangle the Gordian knot that was the brain wiring. And I don't know that I even have that much patience as I've seen him exhibit, but it's something to aspire to. Those two above all else, I think, are, are the most influential on me as a professional educator.